And now the four-time heavyweight champion of the world, Evander, the real Over the last two decades, Evander Holyfield has become the most celebrated, most respected ring warrior of his generation. His vast estate and regal mansion serve as tangible reminders of his immense boxing success. Despite his many achievements, the 40-year-old continues to endure the rigors of the gym and dangers of the ring in a quest for his fifth heavyweight title. I want to end on a bang. I, want, I don't want to end on a low. So, you know, as my career getting ready to end, I would like for people to say, <laughs> I believe he could have went 10 more years. October 4th, Showtime pay-per-view. That's the night I retired Van Holyfield. I'm going to knock him on his butt. The flamboyant James Lights Out Tony has never lacked confidence. While he's earned the respect of boxing insights, the fame he believes he deserves continues to elude him. Twelve years ago, he was poised on the brink of the boxing elite, demolishing highly regarded middleweight champion Michael Knott. Even with 66 wins and world titles in three weight classes, he's never achieved the fame he desperately desires. But a win against a preeminent heavyweight could thrust James Tony into the galaxy of superstars. So knock him out, and Van is going to be on his back. Look at him at the stars. He didn't pay his electric bill, so his lights must go out. Tonight, in the fight capital of the world, they come together. For the aging warrior, a loss could obliterate his dream of a fifth heavyweight title. And for the former middleweight, a win could finally bring him the glory he seeks. It's Holofield versus Tony, next. Hello everybody, I'm Nick Charles and welcome to a star-studded night of boxing. This is a night when many questions hang in the air concerning our main event fighters. Evander Holofield has done what nobody in the history of boxing has ever done, win the heavyweight championship four different times. However, Holofield will turn 41 years old this month, and the looming question, of course, is can he get there again, or has time finally caught up with a fearless warrior? Meanwhile, there is much to speculate about Holofield's opponent, James Tony. At age 35, he's rejuvenated his career, but Tony comes here wanting more, much more. This can be the night he turns promise into reality and slams his way into the heavyweight picture and the riches that would follow. I'm joined tonight by a wealth of colleagues as anxious as I am to watch these fights. So let's get started now and go ringside where Steve Albert and Al Bernstein are standing by. All right, Nick, thank you very much. Here we are, we, we made it. <laughs> this one really has the elements of a crowd pleaser. In addition, there are consequences. Tell us about the risk factors for both Holyfield and Tony. You know, that one of the charms of this event is that as a standalone fight, it's going to provide a lot of excitement for people tonight. But as you point out, there are ramifications for Evander Holyfield. A loss to a cruiserweight champion would certainly end his marketability as a possible heavyweight drawing card. But if he wins, he may be looking at a chance to fight for the IBF title, maybe against Roy Jones Jr. or the winner of the Hasim Rahman David Tua fight. For Tony, a little less risk in that if he loses, he can go back down and potentially dominate the cruiserweight division. But if he wins, he would like a rematch with Roy Jones Jr. And dare I say it, a fight he has always dreamed about. Could he lure Mike Tyson back in the ring? That's also something he would fantasize about. All right. Uh, I could see some eyes rolling already, but it would be a very marketable fight indeed. Uh, an intriguing matchup here, Holyfield versus Tony. Before we get it back upstairs, let's take a look at the action from the weigh-in. Earlier this week, James Tony making his heavyweight debut. 217. 217 pounds for James Lights Out Tony. 217 pounds. And then came the always chiseled Evander Holyfield. 219 pounds for Evander Holyfield. 219. 219 pounds. 
There it is. Now Tony's weight raising concerns over his conditioning should the fight go to the later rounds and could it affect his speed and quickness? We'll see later in the main event. Right now, let's get it back upstairs to Nick Charles. Since he crashed the heavyweight division 16 years ago, Evander Holofield has defied skeptics with his Hall of Fame accomplishments. Nearly 41 years old, he's planning once again to confound his critics and win the heavyweight championship for a record fifth time. Coming up next, our main event, Evander Holofield against James Toney. But first, here's a look at the new reality series which premieres next month on Showtime. From Showtime and producers of 8 Mile. The people know when they hear what's hot. Comes the search for the next superstar of hip hop. The battling, it's a sport. Well, you could be great, but if you freeze up. 10 MCs. Go ahead, bust around. Set it off and get the party exciting. Five cities. Come on, y'all ready for this or what? Yeah. We made the crowd go, oh. One chance to blow. The next is going down, you heard me? Interscope presents the next episode coming in November only on Showtime. This new series will chronicle the trials and triumphs of undiscovered rappers from across America. Be sure to tune in and check it out, coming next month on Showtime. But now, it's time for our main event. Steve, notable things I think in Evander Holofield's favor. He's had his shoulder repaired. He's got the confidence to throw that left hand. Two, he's not going to have to run and find James Toney and expend a lot of energy. And three, he's the bigger man this time. He could out muscle and maybe rough up Tony. Hey, James Toney has a great chin. We know that. He's never taken the punch of a heavyweight. And for those people who think Evander's a small heavyweight without power, keep in mind he's knocked down Mike Tyson. Ray Mercer, Riddick Bowe. That could be Evander's biggest advantage in this fight, the power. Flip side, James Toney, 217 for this. Just extra pounds, how will it help, how will it hurt? Too much, too much weight. He was 190 when he fought Jiroff in the fight that revitalized his career. You add 27 pounds, he has to carry that, that can hurt his legs. His arms are absolutely huge, that could affect his hand speed, which is probably the biggest advantage he had in this matchup. Intimidation will not be an issue. Let's go back ringside to Steve Albert and Al Bernstein. Thank you very much, Nick and Steve. As we close in on the main event, Evander Holyfield and James Toney, a matchup that has stirred the imagination of the boxing community and fight fans alike, given the potential for fireworks, but also a fight which could have serious implications for the future of the heavyweight division. Well, just a, a few months ago, not even the most imaginative of matchmakers would have paired Evander Holyfield with James Toney. Holyfield was negotiating to fight Roy Jones, and Toney was talking about a showdown with Bernard Hopkins. When those fights failed to materialize, Holyfield and Toney turned to each other. There are precious few household names in boxing, and by embracing this matchup, these two warriors are risking their futures. Both seek a shot at the, the world heavyweight title, and tonight's result will go a long way in determining which one will achieve his goal. Holyfield and Tony are equally confident, but both acknowledge this fight as a high-stakes gamble. Let me bring Al Bernstein back into the picture here. Now, is it realistic for Holyfield to be uh, pursuing another world title, and should Tony be fighting as a heavyweight? Well, it's probably unrealistic for Vander Holyfield to think he can unify the heavyweight titles unless he wants to be the first champion ever to fight with an AARP card. Not going to happen in the near future for him. However, he might get a shot to win one more title, specifically the IBF title, if he can win and win convincingly here tonight against Tony. For James Tony, fighting as a heavyweight was really kind of a no-brainer because this is a heavyweight division that is very fluid and not very deep. There's not that many great heavyweights floating around. And he saw what Roy Jones did, and he said, why don't I try it? Well, he is going to try it, and we're going to see how it goes. Now, if ever a fight was compelling because of the styles of two fighters, the Holyfield-Tony fight is certainly that matchup. The question is, how will these boxers use those styles to get a win? For that, we take a look at the keys to victory. Everything Evander Holyfield does in this fight starts with the left. He's got to jab his way in. Cannot step to the right. You have to go to the left to beat James Toney. And one of the most important weapons will be his vaunted double left hook. Perhaps the best example of this came against Michael Moore in their second fight when Holyfield used these weapons to dominate Moore. First the left to the body, then the head. That's the prototype for what he needs to do against Toney. 
James Tony is a very good counter puncher off the ropes, and he can be there sometimes, but he can't stay there all through this fight. Combinations are vital. His hand speed is what's supposed to make the difference for him. And the counter right will be an important weapon against Evander Holyfield. Holyfield comes in sometimes with his left hand low, as Vasily Giroff is here, and then the straight right hand could be a big weapon for James Tony. This is a punch that should be available to him. So the crowd settling in for Evander Holyfield versus James Tony. You got to also mention the intangibles after the keys to victory, like Evander Holyfield's uncanny will and unyielding faith. But has time finally run out on this certain future Hall of Famer? James Tony offers an emphatic yes. Now all he has to do is back it up. James Tony. Last we heard, a slight favorite as he gets ready to come out of the dressing room and toward the ring. Brash outspoken really brings the attitude, the game face. In listening to Tony, you realize that James Tony's favorite fighter is James Tony. He is on a mission to prove his critics wrong, that he will win this fight, which will then lead to a heavyweight title. He's been talking a lot of trash, saying he's got a bloody Holyfield, put him to sleep, retire him, predicting a knockout within seven rounds. If he fights half as well as he talks, this could be a great fight. He's had a roller coaster career, once considered one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. Then he ballooned in weight, looked listless against Roy Jones, blamed his problems on his then exorbitant lifestyle. But he is back in the spotlight, motivated after resurrecting his career against Vasily Giroud. And like Holyfield, he's taken on many of his era's top fighters, including Roy Jones, Iran Barkley, Montel Griffin, Michael Nunn, Reggie Johnson, Mike McCallum. He's won 12 straight, including seven knockouts. The win over Jerov, his first world title in nearly nine years after holding belts at 160 and 168. And now positioning himself for boxing's ultimate prize, the heavyweight championship, a more attainable goal these days in light of the division state of flux. Hearing it, I would say rather mildly from the crowd as he comes into view. They're saving, I think, they're saving it for Holyfield. If Holyfield is boxing's righteous warrior, Al, Tony is the sport's prodigal son, and perhaps Lazarus as well. With all of his bravado in the uh, fight buildup, how much of the burden of proof is on James Tony? I'll tell you what, the last time James Tony was in the spotlight like this was over a decade ago against Roy Jones Jr. He was filled with as much bravado then, he was equally as loquacious. He also had issues of conditioning then, as 17 pounds so yes the burden of proof is on him very much coming up in weight and can James Tony handle this big moment on the stage and is he in the right shape for this fight he'll answer those questions in a few minutes he was working out to shed some extra baggage as recently as this afternoon in the hotel workout room his best fights in the last five or ten years have come in his last couple when he weighed 190 pounds. He weighs 217 tonight. But he says, don't be a naysayer, I know better, I can fight it this way. And if he can, God bless him. You really have to wonder if this fight goes into the later rounds, if that will affect his conditioning, if it is indeed out of shape to some degree. And also, will it affect his speed and quickness? The fact that he came in several pounds over what his team wanted. They wanted him to be closer to 200. He came closer to 220. And much has been made of the fact that a lot of that weight was due to weightlifting. Will it slow his hand speed? 
which is, of course, an important part of his uh, attempt at winning this fight. And Evander Holyfield, this is nothing new in the sport of boxing, is going to make him wait and make him sweat it out, make him think about it as long as possible. What? How many times has Holyfield been written off by the naysayers only to come back again and again? He's on a crusade to demonstrate that you never give up. He's not even out yet, and the fans who see him on the big screen are cheering. He believes, despite the age process perhaps slowing him down, that another heavyweight title and even the undisputed championship is truly his destiny. Always reserved, gracious, spiritual, very much at peace with himself. The only heavyweight in history to win a world title four separate occasions. Known worldwide for his extraordinary warrior spirit, incredible heart and fearlessness. Now he says the only way he'll retire is if someone beats him up. Until then, he'll continue his quest for a fifth belt despite a 10-month layoff. His advanced stage surgery on his left shoulder, which could affect his best and perhaps most important weapon against a guy like Tony. The fact he's won only two of his last seven and comes off a one-sided loss, he's still the sentimental favorite. You know, being reborn is not an abstract idea at all for Vander Holyfield because he feels he's been reborn. Well, physically, the question is, will that surgery on his left arm and shoulder make him a fighter who is reborn? He cannot function in this fight without the jab and the left hook. Before, when he was talking to Jim Gray, he didn't make a compelling case that he feels confident that it's going to be okay, though he has in other days leading up to this fight. So it'll be interesting to see. And by the way, Evander Holyfield, of course, is singing. He sings when he come in the, comes in the ring, but he looks a little more subdued than I've seen him in recent fights. this old war horse have left knowing he not only needs to win but win impressively seen that look on his face coming into a fight almost as if he's surveying this situation saying hmm, I've been here before I want to drink this in now because uh, who knows how many more times I'll have it I don't know if we should perceive it as worried pensive or focused tough to tell what's going on inside his head the irony he was always called the blown up cruiserweight tonight he's fighting a blown up cruiserweight for once Holyfield isn't the smaller fighter Tail of the tape, of course, Holyfield's age jumps out, 41, October the 19th. Holyfield with a height and reach, advantages, big issue, Tony's weight. He insists it's natural. Will it impact the outcome? And the key rules for this heavyweight fight. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fight is ruled a no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. Could be significant knowing Holyfield's reputation of headbutting. So here at the Mandalay Bay, we're getting ready for Evander Holyfield versus James Tony, scheduled for 12 rounds. Let's get the official introductions from a ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's time for our featured bout of the evening brought to you by Goose and Tudor Promotions in association with the Mandalay Bay, the undisputed king of beers, Budweiser, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Luther Mack, commissioners Dr. Tony Alamo, Skip Avancino, John Bailey, and Dr. Flip Homansky with the executive director, Mark Ratner. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. Jeff Davidson, Dr. William Beliner, and Dr. David Watson. Timekeepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns. We have Jane Broadfoot and James Cavan. Introducing our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. All three are from Las Vegas, Nevada. We have Dave Moretti, Jerry Roth, and Paul Smith. And our third man in the ring, the referee in charge of the action. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions. Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled in a heavyweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Mandalay Bay, Introducing to you first, ladies and gentlemen, on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing dark green trunks with white trim, and hailing from Detroit, Michigan. He weighed in at 217 pounds, a veteran of 14 world title appearances. His record stands at 66 wins, four losses, two draws, with 42 wins coming by way of knockout tonight challenging the odds as he steps up to the heavyweight division here is the former IBF middleweight world champion the former IBF super middleweight world champion and the current IBF cruiserweight champion of the world ladies and gentlemen introducing James Six losses and two draws. He has 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former undisputed cruiserweight world champion, the former undisputed heavyweight world champion, and the one and only four-time heavyweight champion of the world. Please welcome boxing's true warrior, Instructions 12 rounds of action scheduled. Do you want to give you instructions to the dressing room? We have any questions? Okay, the belly button to the demarcation line. The such loves go to work. Good luck. Would we even be here tonight if not for the current state of the heavyweight division? That said. When you look at both guys together, the physical difference is immediately apparent. Holyfield really does look bigger. Nearing 20 years as a pro, still looking phenomenal. Tony's desired weight, as mentioned, was uh, closer to 200, came in closer to 220. Was that because for the first time in his career, he didn't have to make weight? Did he train any differently to bulk up? Did he spend too much time promoting the fight? The extra weight may help him on the inside against a strong guy like Holyfield, but will it affect 
his speed and quickness, which he's been saying all along, will be the difference in this fight. He wants to keep a fast pace, does Tony. Bottom line, what kind of shape is Tony in? We'll soon find out. Well, the first punch of the fight for Vander Holyfield was what? A left hook. So There's a surprise. Yeah, he knows he's got to throw that punch, and uh, he must use the jab. Part of the problem with that, oh, there it is again. And that is his best punch. It is, and the jab has been missing from the Holyfield arsenal in recent fights because he said he can't keep the hand up because the shoulder bothers him so much, he has to let it lay down. He can't throw the jab. We'll see in this fight whether it's back. There's a attempt there by a uh, Holyfield that missed Holyfield would flat out beat up opponents early in his career these days priding himself on ring smarts stop like a adjustments on the fly which really came to light in the first meeting with Mike Tyson as he discovered already the answer to Tony's style Holyfield with an overhand right James Tony is a very good defensive fighter, but the way you beat him is you do throw that hook, and there it is. Holyfield knows what to do, and he's doing it here in this round. On the inside, a very effective left hook by Holyfield. And let's let's make another important point here early, and perhaps James Tony will make a liar out of this point. He's never been hit by a guy that hits like Evander Holyfield. And Tony has never been seriously Stop. hurt go, in back. his career. He's he's never been stopped. He's only been down a couple of times. The last time was 1994 with Roy Jones. And of course, as we point out, the guy, the people he's been fighting were middleweights, super middleweights, and then of course up to cruiserweight. Vasily Giroff, while he was very busy and very aggressive in their last fight, threw many arm punches. <laughs> He's been through a lot of wars in the Kronk gym, probably against bigger guys. You wonder if he's ever felt the power of an Evander Holyfield. Although Holyfield, throughout his career, not really known as a knockout puncher, but he made up for that with heart and courage and guts. But he's a bruiser. He's very rough on the inside, accused by many of using the house tactic. That's a heavy right let hand, go, go. a short, crisp right hand to the head by Holyfield. And if you're looking for signs one way or the other, not only is it good for Holyfield that he's thrown the hook so much, he's even getting the right hand in. You don't normally land that against Tony. And Holyfield is picking off shots defensively by Tony. A very good first round for the legendary Holyfield, who just oh, made Tony oh, buckle with a body shot just before the bell. Bell right. Bell right. Perfect first round for Evander Holyfield. We take look at the size difference between the two men. It is really graphic. And here we will see Holyfield ripping the hooks. He comes here with a, an excellent hook right to the face of James Tony. It's a short one and gets in. And it was a weapon that he used. So so far. That repaired shoulder is working. We take yet another look at it. And what makes this special is it was a very short, compact punch. And this is the end of the round where they were rumbling a little bit after the bell. Again, the hook is in by uh, Holyfield. And they have buckled Tony and James Tony taking umbrage at the fact that something may have come after the bell. Certainly not the same Evander Holyfield we saw in his last fight against Chris Bird when he looked very sluggish and mistakenly tried to match wits with the slickster Bird. He is very aggressive and attacking James Tony, and he comes off a terrific opening round. Holyfield threw nearly 30 left hooks, well over 26 left hooks in the uh, first round. So here's a guy who, all, who now finally has that weapon back again and is using it with uh, Great dispatch. Tony trying to get into a rhythm here, starting to throw that left. Misses with the right. Tony jabbing more now and using his uh, crafty defensive skills. He is a great counterpuncher. What I'm seeing out of Holyfield is here, he's fighting in sustained fashion. He is not fighting in spurts. He's not just trying to steal things. One of the weapons that Holyfield's not using yet is the jab. Tony's jabbed a little bit better. And there you see Tony trying to use the jab upstairs, the downstairs, and then go upstairs. 
There's a beautiful jab stuffed in there by uh, Holyfield. That was okay. That was not a low blow, says Jay Mady. By Evander Holyfield. James Tony wants this fight in the center of the ring. You can see he is trying desperately to stay off the ropes. He knows that's a real danger area for him. And he realizes it more now, Steve, after the first round in which he was in that position and couldn't counterpunch like he normally does and was hit with big hooks to the body and the head. Stop! Break! Let go. I like the way uh, Holyfield is setting his distance. And he's trying to throw as Tony gets ready to throw, which was a device used very successfully against a fellow named Mike Tyson in that great first fight. Tony being more aggressive, though, here in the second round, starting to get some of his punches off, a slight subtle change. He's able to land a little bit. And he's getting a little more cutesy now. That's his style, that tricky side-stepping, slipping, the shifting. Have it low, Evander. Now, Holyfield's doing a good job committing to the body. Stop! Let him out, let him out. Have one low there, keep it up. But at least in round two, Tony has found a home for the jab, an occasional hook, an occasional right hand. And certainly made it a much closer round. And Holyfield has been more inactive. Now Holyfield, yes, sport measuring. The work rate has really gone down since that big first round. Nice quick in left hook to the jaw by Tony. A crisp one. That caught Holyfield with his defenses down. Tony making Stop. Holyfield push miss out, a out. lot Thank more you. in this round and maybe doing enough to steal this round. Holyfield missing, but he got him on the inside with a left Stop. hook Stop. uppercut. A better round for James Tony, round two. But the crowd getting behind Holyfield at the end. When you hear that 10 second bell, you're gonna pick it up from me, okay? Okay. You control him. Holyfield anxious to work the body. And that one, eh, right on the border. And then he tries to double with it over the head of Tony. James Tony had his moments, a lot of moments in that last round, actually. And you're not supposed to be able to hook with a left hook artist. Well, he did it right there and got away with it. Shades of some of the hand speed that Tony Holmes will be his calling card during this match. And we enter round three, scheduled for 12, a heavyweight non-title bout. Holyfield sticking the jab, and it's effective. Let's see if he follows it up with the right. Stop! Of course, uh, his key combination is, uh, Alice pointed out, the double left hook to the body and to the head. And so far, that uh, left hand seems okay after the shoulder surgery. from what Evander Holyfield is doing. He's not taking that step to the left. When you don't do that against Tony, you miss with the hook, and he's doing that more in this, in the last two rounds. And Tony is as good a counter puncher there is in the sport today. Nice body Stop. work downstairs Let go. by Let Tony. Go. Back. Back. Let's not forget Holyfield's age. He's 41 years of age. You can't always sustain what you want over the course of a round when you're 41, and here comes Tony back again. Tony with a nice long jab. But one and done. Excellent oh, right by James Tony. A counter punch. And this fight is now settling into what we thought it would be for however long it lasted. And that was two men pot shotting each other and it right in front of each other, throwing and landing. Holyfield told us at our meeting with him that he would try this uh, several times during the fight, try and get Tony lure him in so he could counter him, and that's what he's trying to do now. Tony's not getting hit with any counter punches, he's actually landing a few of his own, including that beautiful left hook on the inside. Tony acknowledging something to his corner, and then he got hit with a combination because of it. Don't hold! 
Watch your head, Evander. Watch your head. Stop. Well, you know the, uh, the history of Evander Holyfield as far as the head is concerned. Mike Tyson, John Ruiz, I see him rock bun. Uh, could tell you about it. Left right combination upstairs did have full impact <clears throat> by Holyfield. It is very hard to hit Tony with a perfect stop, right stop, hand. Stop, stop, stop. Man, you gotta keep your head away from his head. Jay Nady warning Holyfield about the head, uh, jumping right on that issue. Of course, uh, a lot of fighters complaining that Holyfield is dirty. Others say it just gets rough on the inside. And that's the kind of fighter he is. Tony said he's very prepared for that. And he, he just wipes off the sweat off the shoulder as if to say to Holyfield, we're not hurting you. A confident James well, Tony to this you. point, that's for sure. He is gaining a confidence. Holyfield was able to do something you seldom can do against Tony. Land a good right hand, but you see how well Tony slips these punches. This is where you got to step to your left and crank left hooks. Holyfield couldn't do it. And later on in the round, dare I say the hand speed of James Tony, which is apparently at this juncture a little better than Evander Holyfield. No matter what pounds he's fighting at, uh, the right hand gets in. Tony's hand speed is making a difference right now. I'm not saying it's dazzling at this point, but it's certainly better than Holyfield's. Tony's motion toward his corner was actually directed no. toward the judge over there, we are told, in trying to indicate to the judge that he hit Evander Holyfield. He's working the judges. Since the first round. Holyfield is doing what he did against Bird, coming inside and smothering his punches. Could that mean the left shoulder's bothering him again? We can't keep the left up. That's when he does it, when he can't keep that left up and jab his way. He has to come inside. And he's kept the left low and Tony's hit it with right hands. It might be affecting him negatively, you're right. And when you're almost 41 years old, those problems can crop up in a second. Sequence. You can't push him around with your head. Jane 80 again cautioning Holyfield to be careful with the head. That left took blocked by Holyfield. A very interesting round to score. Another good round for Tony. Well, 
my bucket. Jesus Christ. Deep breath. Okay. Very good, James. Right here. Tony got against the ropes. And of course he wants to smother the punches of Holyfield and land his counter punches. There's Holyfield working the body. Tony himself coming back, that's what he does. He counters off those ropes effectively. Holyfield getting some of those shots in well, some being blocked. This is vintage James Tony, and look at him, land the uppercut. It is so hard to hit him when he's in this posture, and you see actually a lot of Holyfield's punches not getting in there, even though he did land some. That is quintessential James Tony. Holyfield has a fight Grab on his hands water. here with water, James water. Tony. As we head into round five, scheduled for 12, Tony now brimming with confidence, tripling up on the left, firing a straight right. And Tony is getting off first. There's a big overhand right to the chin, a left hook to the other side of Holyfield's face. Flicking the jab, doing it all, twisting and turning, James Tony all of a sudden seems to have Holyfield in his pocket. Oh, what a heavy right hand showing the chin of Holyfield. Big shot by Tony. Another one over the top. That oh. left of Holyfield's has gone so low, the lead right by Tony is a slam dunk for him. Press row scoring. It's all knotted up. It, uh, three rounds to one, but the fourth round, a very close round, and it, I could see it being even after four rounds. That is not out of the question. That fourth round was a close round. What's your head, Evander? Tony off to a tremendous start in this round. I'm of the belief Tony is slightly ahead at this point. when he's on the inside here, should be taking that step to the left and making it work. Instead, it's Tony with the double left hook. Hold, hold, hold. James Tony is hooking with the left hook artist, and if anything shows that he's in control of this fight, that is it right now. The fight. Don't hook with a hooker. That extra weight is not affecting Tony's quickness or speed with his hands whatsoever. It's James. Beautiful combination upstairs by James Tony, a countering right, but Holyfield couldn't connect. Interesting, we have role reversal here. Tony getting off first, and Holyfield doing a lot of counter. Tony's known as a superb counter puncher. Oh, what a singing straight right hand to the head of Holyfield. James Tony continues to score. Holyfield is waiting for that to counter, but the problem is he's getting hit, and his hand speed isn't up to the task right now, and he's not getting to the left where he can land that, that hook. And this is becoming a replay of so many previous James Tony fights where fighters stand on his right side and can't land any punches. It's a footwork issue for Holyfield now as much as anything. Look at him. He's in the wrong position. He can't get that hook in. Now he moves the left. again, a big round for Tony. Here is where the left hand is low. A right hand will come across from James Tony. That left hand staying very, very low by Evander Holyfield, and he can't block the right hand. And the combinations from James Tony. One of the keys to victory. He had to throw more than one punch at a time. He's doing it. He said, Holyfield's, oh my God, he sticks his tongue out at Evander Holyfield. He said Holyfield would be available for these punches, and so far, he has been. Going backwards. Work that jab, bumping backwards and banging. Let's go. Use that left hand. Evander Holyfield with an incredible look of concern on his face, perhaps underestimating James Tony. And let's 
remember, he's just short of his 41st birthday. And at a certain point, athletes can wear down. And athletes, particularly fighters, can get old. They turn old in one night. You know, after a textbook for a body shot by Tony, and you saw the reaction, the grimace of Holyfield. It was a perfect first round for Evander Holyfield, and since then it has been all James Tony. Now again, Tony motioning over. I can only assume to the judge who is smiling. Stop! Let him out. Let go ball to, to tell him once again, I connected with a punch. <laughs> Just in case he didn't see it. You know what? I, doesn't he know we're supposed to do the commentary? Devastating Evander Holyfield now, and Holyfield with no answers. And let's say this about James Tony: He told us, "I'm going to throw combinations. I will have hand speed in this fight. Don't be deceived by the fact that I've got big arms, that I weighed more than everybody thought I should." And so far, and we say so far, he's followed through on his promise. Well, to this point, that is true. It is uh, very easy to say that the extra weight Evander, is having don't no negative effect on James Tony. And Holyfield smothering himself, doing exactly what he did against Chris Burr. What the reason for that is, I don't know. Is it because the arm hurts and he can't get it up? And uh, you know, you throw the jab. It's very low right now. Whatever the reason, he is not fighting a smart fight right now. Not a good strategic fight and not a very active fight. And again, I've seen James. I've I've been on broadcast 15 or 20 James Tony fights. You can't. You got to get to your left and rip punches. And right now he's not doing it. Tony just digging in with left hands to Holyfield's body. Has to be wearing Holyfield out. Holyfield with tremendous guts. Plowing forward. And now Stop. hanging on. Let go. Let go. Holyfield Thank starting you. to really show the wear and tear and the exhaustion. Oh, what a right hand by Tony. And then eluding. The comebacker, the left hook try by stop, Holyfield. Stop, stop, stop. You gotta watch banging him. You're, you're hitting him. Now, that looked like a use of the head by Holyfield. Jane 80 gave him another caution, might take a point away. I have to tell you, there's another factor to this. James Tony's hit Evander Holyfield with, Evander, I guess, is almost the best punches you can throw, and Holyfield hasn't gone anywhere, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Now he's going backwards, but he swings wildly, Holyfield, and misses. Perhaps out of frustration, going back to the head, buddy. Bill, Bill, Bill! Thank you. simply too much right now for Holyfield talking to the judge and saying hey I landed that shot and then uh, watch I'm gonna land some more I mean that's that's bravado like you wouldn't expect to see in this fight the right hand's been a very important weapon for Tony and look how he slips those punches he's a very good defensive fighter and here's where they caution well that you know Holyfield dipped his head and banged Tony's and did it again so Jay Nady correct in giving him a warning, and I think a point deduction soon wouldn't be bad. In almost whispering tones in the Holyfield corner, Don Turner, who's been with the, the Real Deal seven years, told Holyfield, you got to get busy. He's punching over, so you punch under. Let's see. Well, it may be too late in terms of stamina and all the rest of it for Holyfield to change his game plan. He may have to feel and it may be that he's going to have to land something that hurts James Tony. And remember, in the first round of the half, he did land some big shots, and apparently they didn't hurt Tony. Tony is so bubbling with confidence right now, he strutted back to his corner. Keep your head back. That last sequence was this fight in microcosm. Holyfield landed a right hand, wasn't perfect, came with the left hook, which was blocked, came with another left hook, which was uh, which Tony slipped. That is what he's facing. Don't hold, don't hold. Scores unofficial at the halfway point. Don't hold. Let go. Let go. Hold. Here's your press row, people. They've got Tony now inching ahead. Remember, it was all tied up. 
earlier after four. And through six, they've got Tony up a couple of points. I have Tony ahead by, uh, I am winning every round since the first. One, the fourth was very close. So you have a, a bit Pops. of a bigger disparity yep. than the judges along press row. Midway through the seventh round. Momentum swinging early after a good first round by Holyfield. Tony coming up. Very right strong. There. No knockdowns. Holyfield looks tired. He is fighting in spurts. He is not fighting full rounds. That's and that okay. has been uh, symptomatic of what has caused his problems in the last five or six fights, and it's continued here tonight. A booming right hand to the head by Tony. And Holyfield just stands there and absorbs it. He's absorbed a lot of punishment tonight at the hands of the smaller James Tony. But he keeps on fighting. Watch your heads! Trying. Watch your heads! Not enough punches coming for the Brandon Holyfield. And we don't know at this juncture if he can hurt Tony with a big shot. Tony just too fast for him, too quick. Stop! Stop! He loses it defensively. Go, go. Brandon Holyfield, who is on that crusade to become undisputed champion once again. You have to wonder about, about that after this performance stop, stop. tonight Thank against you. a cruiserweight champion. James, beautiful, beautiful. Get that button. That's the way. Keep turning this guy for me, okay? All right? All right, you land those shots, don't stand right. He's giving you the ball. Take it. He would beat Holyfield to the punch. He has done that. You notice Holyfield throws the hook, but it's blocked by Tony. Look at the defensive moves of James Tony. He says he's a, a throwback. He is that. An aficionado of legends like Ezra Charles and Sugar Ray Robinson now looking to end the career of a, of a legend in Evander Holyfield. But you get the feeling in listening to Holyfield now that even a loss tonight. Big right hand by out of nowhere. Right hand by Tony. You get the feeling after listening to Holyfield, even with a loss tonight, he won't step away from the sport. It is going to take a freight train to hit him. Well, Stop we'll see. Guys. Based let's, upon let's this back. performance, he is certainly not doing well. You know, Tony, his old trainer Bill Miller showed him all those films of a Walcott, Ezra Charles, and a fighter who he really refers Rocky Marciano. Yeah. And he is not fighting like Rocky Marciano because it's all about hand speed and combinations of defense, but I'll tell you what, he's showing that kind of grit and determination. He reveres Marciano because he was a small heavyweight. Now this is vintage James Tony. He does his thing, steps back, admires, and then comes forth again. He's had, I mean, the Giroff fight in this fight and one or two before that is the best he's fought in over a decade. It's fascinating. It's as if a light switch came on. And even though he hasn't lost since 1997, Tony, he hasn't performed well. Now he's getting really cute. He's got to be careful sticking out his left arm. He's getting hit by Holyfield, but apparently Don't not being hurt. Hand. And that's a new story. Look at him. He's looking at the judge again. The judge is laughing. And Holyfield whacked him with three good punches. Watch your head, please. Tony's co-pilot in the corner, Freddie Roach, up to this point, really likes what he sees. Watch your head, please. You know, Vander Holyfield's Hello. not a bad heavyweight puncher. He's knocked some people out. And one thing you don't lose even with your age usually is the power you do have. He's hit James Tony with some very nice shots. And none of them have made a huge impact. And we say 
say that because that leads us now to talk about Stop. James Tony, the heavyweight. Does this mean, based upon this performance so far, that James Tony can take some pretty good heavyweight punches? It may well. There's a little trickle of blood from the uh, lower lip of Evander Holyfield. As Tony continues to press forward, Holyfield trying to escape the ropes, which he does. And blood now coming down heavier from the mouth of Holyfield. And he can't answer. That was an opportunity to answer right there. Tony with a wild right hand, he left himself wide open and no counterpunch by Holyfield. He just stood there. Again, nothing. Comes back with a couple of soft left hands. And no effect on Tony. Tony stares him down. And again, struts back to his point. Oh, hold it, listen. Let me tell you something. Listen good to me. If you don't stop getting hit with them right hands, I'm gonna stop this fight, man. You hear what I'm telling you, man? You gotta, you gotta take charge, man. I care too much for you to be see you be getting hit with these right hands. That's exactly right. Right on. You? Getting hit with right hands that you shouldn't be getting hit with. Okay. Okay. You gotta go. You want another round? You want another round? Good. Okay. okay, well, fight then. Okay. Fight, fight yeah. then, man. Come on, let's go, man. Right get him out of here. Sure. Get him out of here. Come on. Right put it out. Put it out. You got to put out, man. Come on. A dramatic, perhaps sad moment there in the corner. Don Turner urging Evander Holyfield, showing compassion for Holyfield's health. And welfare. That's one of the most poignant moments I remember in a boxing corner in a long time. And let's see what happens. Telling Evander Holyfield, if you continue to get hit by these right hands, which you just got hit by again, there it is again. I'm going to stop the fight. Holyfield never, never acquitted. He's just going to stand in there. He didn't really respond. Did you hear him say anything? No. It, it, he kind of shook his head. He said something about, I'll do it. But I don't know. It stop. wasn't with conviction. It was with soft stop, stop, tones. Stop, stop, stop. Thank there you. Now he's box. No quit. Of course. And Evander Holyfield, as you check out the press row scoring, it continues to widen for Tony. Oh, there's a short left hook. Another one by Holyfield. Oh, he's just, he's trying. He's hitting him with hooks.
Ron Turner acting out of compassion and love. You knew all along you would do for Holyfield. And no argument from the real deal. He was getting punished round after round by this man, James Tony. Big right hands, left hooks, and so elusive defensively. And he was getting off first most of the time. Detroit, baby, Detroit, Detroit, baby at Auburn. Detroit, baby. Watch out, baby. You know what I'm talking about? That's how we do it. We a heavyweight team. coming That's out we party we for feet, James Tony. Nobody do it like that. Jimmy Lennon Jr. Another, has another Southern brother the details. in the ground, baby. They can't deal with me. Nobody do it like that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. One minute, 42 seconds in round number nine. Our referee in charge, Jay Nady, recognizes the corner and agrees. He stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, James. The second man to stop Evander Holyfield. The only time before this was against Riddick Bowe. And how much bigger is Riddick Bowe? Granted, it was years ago and it was Evander Holyfield in his prime. How much bigger is Riddick Bowe as a man normally than James Tony? That's truly astonishing. And James Tony made good on his promise. And that man. A legend in the sport could be headed to retirement. It was the third fight with Bo, a TKO round number eight. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Steve. James, congratulations on the fight tonight. Were you simply just too quick and too fast for Evander Holyfield? I'm too quick for, I'm too quick and too fast for anybody who's stepping in the room as a heavyweight. That's the bottom line. You know, Jim, I don't know why you come up here. Don't come up here and try to give me no badass questions, try to degrade me. I want to thank the God, thank the man upstairs. Question's legitimate. Were you, were you too quick? Evander Holyfield was a great fighter. Don't diminish that at any time. Holyfield's a great warrior. He came to fight. Bottom line. Did he ever Who's hurt Who's next? You? I got milk, baby. Who's next? My mom, Sherry, yeah. Uncle Larry. Oh, everybody love y'all. Did he ever I hurt you me. at any point tonight? Bottom Scott. No, he never hurt me, man. I'm, un I'm undestructible. Don't forget that when I'm ready, I'm undestructible, baby. I'll fight anybody out there anywhere, anytime. Next! Next! Who's next? Detroit, baby. Detroit! Well, well, who is, well, I don't uh, care. Uh, Whoever uh, Dan Gusolano, that's who I'm knocking over next. Bottom line, Goose and Tudor, we're number one. We're taking over the thing. You know that? Hey, hey, uh, my talent speaks for itself. I ain't gonna answer nobody else's question. I'm going home. We're gonna have a party. Oh, we're gonna have a party. Everybody doubting me. If they don't wanna respect me, fuck them. You got your respect. Excuse you me. You got your respect now. You know, I don't want no respect. They ain't gonna respect me. Bottom line, Goose Tudor, a Van Holyfield's a great fighter. Hey, I watched him when I was a kid. I love the guy, but I had to do what I had to do. That's what I get paid to do. Bottom line, Detroit in the house. You, Emmanuel you, Stewart. James. I got your message, baby. Let's try and have you a, know it. Let's try and have a decent interview no, and a conversation have, here. Hold on a second here. Look, Jake, Jake. Come on, Come on, let's go over to Evander Holyfield. Evander, father time, just catch up tonight? Well, no, um, he was able to get off before I did. He was, um, what? Oh, come on. Hey, where about it? Okay. Love you, dog, for real. Much respect to you. Much love, baby. Go ahead. Well, you know, I, I, the big thing is that uh, he was able to get off before me. Uh, the time is to live on. And, and, uh, and he, you uh, know, he got, he got off before Yes, James me. still thinks there's a fight in here. <laughs> I don't know. He, he got off before me. He, he, was, he, was, a, he was a lot quicker. And um, and at times that um, I got him in a position to hit him at, uh, he, his agility, he was just a little too quick, a little quick, too, too quick for me. Evander, you knew you're now 2-8 and eight in your last eight fights. You've won two of your last eight fights. You said before the fight that you would continue fighting. Your goal is to be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, that you'd have to be beaten up. Were you beaten up sufficiently tonight oh, to stop fighting? No. I, he, 
he won, and he, this is a fight that, you know, he got off before me and all that, and uh, his punches, he, you know, he hit one. It was just an overwhelming punch. He just got off before me, and, uh, and um, he out hustled me, out pointed me, and uh, he got to the position before me, and so, you know, he just, it's just a guy just out outmaneuvered me the night, just from, you know, from the start, he just. How, how mentally difficult is it for you to be in this type of position, having been the warrior that you've been in the ring? Well, you know, warrior is for a person that don't quit. And it's not like I, I quit in there, even though he was, uh, I was a step behind and everything that I did, he was able to get off before I was. And it's not so much that when the guy throwing, I guess, uh, three times as much punches uh, than you, and he beating you to the position and not maneuvering you pretty much the whole fight. This is what happened. What did Don Turner say to you after he stopped the fight? Well, he said he did what he had to do. He f felt that it was right. And um, he didn't want to see me take any more punches. And um, he did what he felt that was right. Let's take a look at the end of the fight. If we can see this right here, Evander. Tell us what's going through your mind here. Well, you know, the, the thing is that he don't hit hard enough to uh, get right there. Right there, it was just, uh, just a number of punches. But, you know, I, you know, I was off balance, and it, it was a good shot. It was a shot that knocked me down, but it wasn't, you know, the shot that that, that really hurt me. And it, it just, you know, it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't. Will you go home to Atlanta now and evaluate just exactly where you are and, and how long will that evaluation take? Of course, you know, I will go home and evaluate. You know, uh, I guess the most important thing in life is that when you don't do well, the first, the first thought of the mind is just quit. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a part of life. And that's what, uh, that's what, you know, everybody do when they have a bad performance. And of course, it's just a bad performance and, and, you know, he, he was a better man tonight. You have always been your own best equator, your own equilibrium inside. You've always known what was best. Will you listen now to others who may have your best interest at heart in this decision? Well, I'm, I'm, I always listen. And the fact of the matter is that, you know, still, you know, I, I give thanks to the Lord. And, you know, and I wish, you know, I would go back and, and observe it. Right now is to make a decision now, it would just be an emotional decision. It's easy to say, I'm finished, I'm out of here, because, you know, uh, you know, a guy like myself, this is something that usually don't happen. I don't usually have nights uh, this off. And, you know, just like I said, let somebody beat me up, then I have to say, you know, the guy, the guy did beat me up today, meaning that he got the best, and he, he out-hustled me, he out-pointed me in every position, and, 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 I didn't use size, I didn't use anything as a measure to to do anything. So, you know, you know, I don't have no excuses. This left arm was fine. I didn't use it. My legs were fine. I didn't use it. I didn't use none of the things that that naturally I would have, would have used. And, and you know, the one thing I was waiting on as as confident as he got I started seeing that he was getting open. And the big thing is when you hurt, this is time that you can really catch, catch a person. I know I hit a lot harder than him and it just, you know, unfortunate they stopped the fight. But I, you know, at just the point he had me hurt, he, he opened up and throw, and throw big, big loose looping punches. And I felt that my better chance is that since he feel that he's hurt me and all that, I can catch him with a clean shot. He, he yeah. couldn't quite do it. Well, he had to run the defense. He's, you know, it's, it's, it's not like the guy that don't have good defense. He's, he's a good, good fighter. All right, Evander, we appreciate your time tonight. Most gracious in defeat. You've been a great champion. Well, thank you. All right, Steve, back down to you. Thanks, Jim. I think the uh, most significant thing that he said there, at least to me, was it was just a bad performance. I think it was a lot more than just a bad performance. A lot happening here tonight, but you can't lose sight of the headline. Where does one of the all-time greats go from there as you see the scoring at the time of the stoppage? All for uh, 
uh, James Tony four points only two points for Jerry Roth the the judge that he kept looking at Paul Smith uh, had uh, Tony winning by four points but <clears throat> As we switch over to the uh, press row scorers, Carlos uh, Arias had Tony by four. Mike Hersley had uh, Tony by four. And the same for Steve Springer. They were all in agreement as far as the uh, victory for Tony is concerned. But I think the big picture, where does one of the all-time greats uh, go from here? He's almost 41 years old. I think he really has to take a hard look in the mirror and closely examine his future as a result of this performance. This gives us a graphic example of why it's necessary for him to evaluate and think about where he's at. And I think most people would say the conclusion is inescapable. He made the key point to Jim Gray. The shoulder wasn't bothering him. He was able to use the shoulder. He just didn't. And that's what happens when you get too old to continue in boxing. He even made the point, it was a classic point, he saw shots available but couldn't get them in. And the third thing is, he did hit James Tony with big punches and Tony just didn't go anywhere. So when you add all that up, it equals a 41-year-old fighter who just can't get the job done anymore. He may fight again after going back to the Atlanta area and reevaluating, but for all intents and purposes, could he be done? This could be the last walk for Evander Holyfield. And if it is, you can see the fans still filled with affection for him. Affection, emotion, because they may be witnessing a little bit of sports history right here, if indeed it is the last walk for Evander, the real deal Holyfield. Sad in one respect, but not so sad in another in terms of the, the health, welfare, and well-being of a human being. Yeah, if he decides to get out of the sport, and uh, and truthfully, I've been loath uh, ever to make a strong statement about a fighter needing to retire, but I think it's clear that Evander Holyfield needs to look in that direction right now because he was dominated in this fight. And that's not to denigrate Tony, but he was dominated. He brings grace and elegance to a sport that could really use a pick-me-up, a sport that has had its difficulty, particularly recently, in all kinds of areas. But as Evander Holyfield perhaps ponders his future, very quietly walks back to the dressing room, one of the all-time great fighters, and also just great for boxing. No question that the story uh, is Evander Holyfield, even though James Tony, uh, once a middleweight, now a player in the uh, heavyweight division, uh, perhaps also because the heavyweight division is in a state of utter disarray. That helps his cause. It's a more attainable goal. Absolutely. Right it's a very poignant moment, and there's no question that, that if this is the exit of Evander Holyfield, it is something that will resonate with boxing fans everywhere. But it is also possible that 35, James Tony, who took some heavyweight punches tonight, has made himself a player on the center stage of the heavyweight weight division. How would you speculate in terms of the future of, of Tony? He says, uh, next, that's his thing. It's like at a bakery. Next? I, I don't want to jump on a Tony bandwagon too much based upon this performance against a, a, who turned, a man that turned into a very old fighter, but he showed great defensive skills and, and he also he also showed he could take a punch, and a good heavyweight punch. Well, it was um, ungentlemanly uh, behavior yeah. during his interview with uh, uh, Jim Gray and also ungentlemanly uh, situation here moments ago we caught this as he went out with a fan in the stands this is very unfortunate because James Tony is not really not the evil guy that we end up thinking we're seeing he has moments that are much better than this but there's a hostility in him that doesn't allow him to turn the other cheeks in many cases and this is one of them he obviously uh, Al still has plenty of fight left in him it, it was a fascinating evening on all fronts but I, I do want to say what happened in this ring, despite the fact that Evander Holyfield got old, raises some very interesting questions about the future of Tony as a uh, heavyweight, and I think creates some interesting possibilities.
Are, are you are you saying uh, if he if he doesn't fight a Mike Tyson or a Roy Jones, those are very marketable fights. He'll go back down uh, to a cruiserweight. No, I think he's going to stay as a heavy, I think he's going to find some heavyweight to fight, and the burden of proof now is on a heavyweight to hurt him or be able to hit him. There's also the the winner of Rockman uh, uh, Tua coming up as well, so which would seem interesting... like a very bad matchup if it was a David Tua for him. But based upon what I saw tonight, I wouldn't make James Tony a huge underdog even to David Tua because I'm not sure Tua would. Hit hit him, and I'm not sure that he wouldn't pepper a David Tua with a lot of punches and make him get tired. All right, so that's the story from uh, down here at ringside. A very, very exciting and poignant night uh, in the world of boxing. Let's get it back upstairs to Nick Charles. Thank you, Steve. And so tonight we witnessed the probable end of an era and a breakthrough performance for a new heavyweight contender. Steve Farhood and I will be back with some final thoughts. But first, let's take another look at the new reality series coming to Showtime.